in this video we will be taking up a very important topic which is the regulation of digestion or regulation of digestive secretions in the case of vertebrates in the previous lectures we have discussed the mechanism of digestion and we have seen that the digestion it is taking place in the body of an animal because of two major digestive glands which are the liver and the pancreas though the intestine is also involved because intestine is also giving a rich amount of enzymes to digest the food so before starting the topic we should uh, discuss there is a great correlation of the digestive enzymes with the food habits of the animals the diet to a large extent it influences the synthesis and the secretion of different types of enzymes in an animal so what the animal is eating the secretions it depends upon they depend upon the type of the food that is taken in now studies they have shown that the feeding experiments were uh, performed on the animals and it has been seen that there is enzymatic adaptation in the animals that means if a particular food is given to the animals generation by generation that will make some changes in the enzymatic composition of that particular animal so if we are suppose uh, if we are uh, i'm quoting the example of humans so if we are not eating cellulose so we will uh, lose our cellulase enzyme so we have already lost our cellulase enzyme but uh, there is a structure which is called as a vermiform appendix so some scientists they think that this can be the seat of the bacteria or the symbiotic bacteria in our intestine but now in the present form it is not helping in the digestion of the cellulose so these experiments they have shown that enzymatic adaptations may be present in the animals and those enzymes which are formed in the body of the animal their secretion and their regulation it depends upon the type of the feeding habits of the animals now in one such of the experiments rats were fed exclusively on the carbohydrate diet for 3 weeks so this experiment showed that some of the changes have taken place in the pancreatic enzymes so there was a change in the pancreatic enzymes first change seen was that there was an increase in the amylase in the pancreatic enzymes so that means that increased the release of pancreatic amylase in the rats second change was that trypsin was reduced in amount however a third change was also seen that there was no change in the lipase so that means if we are taking only carbohydrates lipase is still secreted in the alimentary canal so the secretion of lipase was not changed at all so these were some of the feeding experiments 
and those experiments were also done with uh, protein and fat rich diets so when these animals were fed with a high protein diet and not the carbohydrates the activities of the proteases they were altered very slightly they were altered but not to very high extent there was no change found in the lipases and amylases so that means if you take in only the protein the lipases and the amylases there was no change seen in those two kinds of the enzymes so that means the enzymes will be secreted they will be regulated if the experiment is a short term experiment there will be no change in the regulation of digestive enzymes but if the change is quite big for a long time then the enzymes will be altered so there can be a correlation of the digestive enzymes with the feeding habits okay now that was the very first concept in the regulation of digestion now we have to go for the coordination of the secretion of digestive enzymes that how they are secreted and how the secretion of these digestive enzymes is coordinated coordination means that if i need a particular amount of protease in our body in the body of the animal then it should be regulated to that particular extent it should not be excreted more it should not be excreted less than the required amount so that is the coordination now there exists a very important coordination mechanism between the feeding the availability of the food and the secretion of the digestive juices so the animals they are producing the amount of the digestive juices according to the feed now the mechanisms they both have nervous and hormonal components in the coordination mechanisms so in the coming slides will be seeing that these digestive enzymes they are regulated both on nervous as well as the hormonal component so both these components are important in the regulation of digestive secretions now if i take up uh, the very first step that will be the nerves and the hormones so here it has been shown that the digestive system is controlled by both nerves and hormones now first of all we are taking up the neuronal control of digestion so neuronal control is taken up as a mechanism of digesting enzyme secretion controlling as the autonomic nervous system is taking up the control for the coordination of the secretions so here the autonomic nervous system is responsible for the control of the digestive processes the autonomic nervous system is composed of two major systems the first is the sympathetic nervous system and second is the parasympathetic nervous system so these are the two major parts of the ans or the autonomic nervous system now here the activity of both these components of autonomic nervous system it is quite different so if you see 
the sympathetic nervous system it decreases the digestive system activity so you can well see I think this particular arrow so that means it is decreasing the digestive system activity as such it will be a negative kind of a feedback for the secretion of digestive enzymes on the contrary if you go with the parasympathetic nervous system it is increasing the activity of the digestive system the activity of the digestive glands so it will help to stimulate the secretion of the glands it will overall increase the digestive system activity as such also now we are taking up the sympathetic nervous system so the sympathetic nerves that regulate the digestion they are so the first one is the greater splanchnic nerves the second is the lumbar splanchnic nerves and the third are the sacral splanchnic nerves so these three they are making the sympathetic nerves that are controlling the whole of the digestive processes so as in the previous slide we have seen that the sympathetic nervous system or the sympathetic nerves they decrease the digestive system activity so these three kinds of nerves the splanchnic nerves they are decreasing the activity of the digestive enzymes or the whole of the digestive system next we have the parasympathetic nervous system and the nerve which is controlling the parasympathetic the part of this system is the vagus nerve so this particular nerve is controlling the secretion of the digestive enzymes so as we have seen that uh, this particular nerve is increasing the digestive system activity now these are the hormones that are controlling digestion so the first part was of the nervous control so there we have seen that the autonomic nervous system is controlling the digestive processes now here we are taking up the second part the hormones so here we have got the gastrin the secretin the cholecystokinin the glucose insulinotropic peptide the GIP and we have got two more hormones which are uh, important in this part they are enterogastrone and enterokinin so I'll be taking up uh, these two hormones later on so first of all we are taking gastrin so the major effects of the gastrin they are that they stimulate it stimulates the gastric juice secretion so it is a very well known fact that the nervous phase of the secretion of gastric juice is followed by the chemical phase now this phase the chemical phase it involves the secretion of gastrin now gastrin it is secreted by the pyloric wall of the stomach so this is a very very important thing to note that this is secreted by the pyloric wall of the stomach so this gastrin when it is secreted but general circulation this hormone it reaches the other parts of the stomach and it stimulates the gastric secretion so this is a very important thing to note 
that it is secreted by the stomach and it is acting on the stomach itself so gastrin is posing a positive stimulus to the stomach to secrete its digestive juices now at the cellular level the hormone it acts on the parietal cells of the gastric glands that are producing a well known hcl so these are affecting the parietal cells of the stomach so the gastrin it is increasing the amount of the hcl which is produced by the stomach now second thing here is that the gastrin is composed of two peptides first is the gastrin 1 and second is the gastrin 2 so both are uh, capable both are uh, making a positive stimulus for hcl secretion now this gastric secretions it follows mechanical and chemical stimulation of the pyloric wall so whenever the food reaches the stomach when the bolus is reaching the stomach it will help to release this gastrin so the second function of gastrin is that it stimulates the smooth muscle contractions so this is the second function of the gastrin so it will stimulate the smooth muscle contraction so that means the contraction of the whole stomach wall and the duodenum it will increase now here is one thing which is uh, worth mentioning that the mechanical stimulation it normally results from the presence of the food in the stomach and the chemical stimulation from a number of secretogogs which are present in the food or originating during the digestion in the stomach so the gastrin the secretion of the gastrin is stimulated by two kinds of methods first method is the mechanical stimulation which we have discussed earlier that whenever the food enters the stomach it will stimulate the release of the gastrin the chemical part of this secretion of gastrin is due to the presence of some compounds in the food or the compounds which are produced during the digestive process inside the stomach so that will increase the secretion of the gastrin so whenever this gastrin is produced in the pyloric wall of the stomach it will going back to the stomach and increase the gastric juice secretion in which particularly the parietal cells of the gastric glands they are stimulated to increase the release of the hcl okay now next if we go with the third kind of uh, <coughs> function of this gastrin it is the relaxation of the pyloric sphincter so this is again a very very important uh, function so whenever the food it comes to the stomach it is digested it stimulates the formation of gastrin gastrin it stimulates first the stomach second the pyloric sphincter now what is pyloric sphincter this is the sphincter which is present in between the stomach the pyloric part of the stomach stomach has got two parts so you i think you are knowing it first part is the cardiac part second is the pyloric part and the pyloric part has got the pyloric sphincter now this sphincter if it is open the food can go from the pyloric part to the duodenum so if here we draw suppose
suppose this is uh, this is the cardiac part of the stomach the bigger part of the stomach and here we have got the pyloric part after the pyloric part we have got the esophagus or not here we should say uh, not esophagus this is duodenum so here at this particular uh, point we have got the pyloric sphincter so the food will enter from the pyloric part of the stomach which is over here from the pylorus the food will enter into the duodenum through this pyloric sphincter so it will enter here so this is the function of gastrin this is the third function okay if we go after the gastrin we are having the next hormone which is the secretin now secretin is a very very important hormone for the pancreas now the pancreas it is the major digestive organ which is producing the pancreatic juice now it is containing the digestive enzymes that are very much active in the intestinal part of the digestive system so both nervous as well as hormonal components they are found to be involved in the control of this organ pancreas so as we have seen in the case of uh, stomach the gastrin was acting on the stomach wall and here the pancreas is also under both nervous and hormonal control whenever the food it passes from the pyloric part of the stomach to the duodenum as we have seen in the very last slide from the pyloric sphincter the profuse secretion of pancreatic juice is initiated so whenever this food whenever the digested food from the stomach it enters into the duodenum the secretion of secretin is triggered on now in response to the entry of uh, i should say chyme chyme is a partially digested uh, food which is coming from the stomach though it is acidic because uh, it has got uh, the hydrochloric acid from the stomach so chyme whenever it is entering into the intestine so intestinal mucosa it secretes the hormone secretin so that means this particular hormone is secreted by the intestine it is not secreted by the stomach as the first hormone which was gastrin it was secreted by the stomach wall but here the secretin is secreted by the intestinal mucosa now whenever this hormone is secreted it goes via circulation into the blood and it reaches the pancreas so it stimulates the pancreas for uh, giving out the more secretions the more pancreatic juice now along with this uh, secretin a second hormone which is called as the pancreozymin so this is very very important we should write over here this is pancreozymin so this is again very important for uh, the pancreas now this second hormone it is also secreted by the intestinal mucosa and it is also helpful in controlling the pancreatic juice secretion along with the secretin so these are two hormones kindly note first was the gastrin second is the secretin third is the pancreozymin 
so both these hormones they are controlling the pancreas now the secretin it especially stimulates a particular part of the pancreas that is rich in bicarbonates and poor in the enzymes so the secretin it is helping the pancreas to give out a bicarbonate rich secretion but that is poor in the enzymes whereas the pancreozymin hormone it is influencing the pancreas to secrete a more enzyme rich pancreatic juice so this is a very very important uh, uh, part to note that the secretin this particular hormone it is influencing to give a more bicarbonate rich secretion but that is poor in enzymes whereas the pancreozymin it is helping to helping the pancreas to secrete more enzymatic fluid so this is a very very important thing so here if you go by the very first function of secretin it stimulates the bicarbonate secretion from the pancreas so here we have not written that uh, uh, it is secreting it is uh, stimulating the pancreas to go for more enzymes so here it is stimulating the bicarbonate secretion so this particular uh, function is with the secretin not the pancreozymin now second is that it stimulates the bile production this is a very very important thing now here we should note that the secretin is not only affecting the pancreas it is also affecting the liver so liver is producing the bile so secretin it is giving a positive i should say a positive response to the liver for the production of bile so it is positively correlated with the secretion of the bile okay third function of secretin is that it inhibits the gastric juice secretions and gastric motility so it is very clear that when the food is coming out into the intestine there is no need for gastric juice secretion then so whenever the food it leaves the stomach and it comes to the intestine whenever the secretin is secreted from the intestine that's because the food has entered intestine now the stomach is empty so there is no need of gastric juice secretions there is no need of gastric motility as the gastrin was doing so it inhibits the gastric juice secretions and the motility as the food is now in the intestine and not in the stomach there is a very important fact about the secretion of these two hormones from the intestinal mucosa first of all we are taking up the case of secretin now we have already discussed that secretin is secreted by the intestinal mucosa but what is the stimulus so the stimulus for the secretion of the secretin is the acidic chyme that means whenever the food is entering into the intestine from the stomach it is having hcl so that acidity that acidic nature of the food it is stimulating the secretion of the hormone secretin whereas the pancreozymin 
is again released from the intestine intestinal mucosa I should say but the stimulus is totally different now what is the stimulus for pancreozymin it is the these are the digestive compounds which are present in the digested food that is coming inside the intestine so that means the acidic part of the food will stimulate the secretion of secretin whereas the digestive moieties which are coming from the digestive system or the stomach we should say these are stimulating the formation of pancreozymin so now if we take up the functions of secretin as the secretin is stimulating the formation of bile as we have seen in the function number two it stimulates bile production so as we are saying that acidic chyme is giving rise to secretin and this secretin is stimulating the liver to produce bile so that means it is helping to making this food basic so now the food is becoming basic in nature so that was the main function of the secretin now if we go with the pancreozymin what is the case of pancreozymin I'll be taking up the red color arrows for pancreozymin the digestive compounds are coming from the stomach to the intestine they are helping to release the pancreozymin okay now we have the red arrow so the digestive compounds which are coming from the stomach when they are entering into the intestine they are producing or they are stimulating the production of pancreozymin and what the pancreozymin is doing it is stimulating the pancreas to make an enzyme rich pancreatic juice so this enzyme rich pancreatic juice it will digest the digestive compounds or the food so as we all know that the digestive enzymes in the intestine they are only and only active in the basic medium they are not active in the acidic medium so these two things they are very very important secretin what is doing it is making the medium basic by the production of the by stimulating the production of bile from the liver as shown in the blue arrows the pancreozymin is increasing the formation of the digestive enzymes which are active only and only in the basic medium so the first step is very very important for the second step now we have our fourth hormone this is the cholecystokinin the first was the gastrin second was secretin third was the pancreozymin and now fourth is the cholecystokinin now cholecystokinin is the hormone which is produced by the intestine again so it stimulates the secretory processes which bring about the emptying of the gall bladder that means if the liver is producing bile that is stored in the gall bladder and this particular hormone the cholecystokinin 
is stimulating the contractions in the gall bladder that means it stimulates the release of the bile from the gall bladder so it is very much taken as a very first function of cholecystokinin so it stimulates the bile release from the gall bladder now recent studies they have uh, strongly indicated that cholecystokinin and pancreozymin they are both similar in structure they are similar chemically they are identical and they are acting concurrently so that means simultaneously they are acting on the digestive processes now the cholecystokinin it is released as a chyme it enters the duodenum so that means whenever the duodenum the food is entering into the intestine again as the secretin was stimulated the pancreozymin was stimulated the cholecystokinin release was also stimulated when the food it enters the duodenum so the second function here which is given that it stimulates the pancreatic juice secretion so that means the cholecystokinin it is not only and only going for the secretion of the bile from the gall bladder stored in the gall bladder but it is also stimulating the pancreas for its juice secretion okay third thing which is mentioned over here is relaxation of the hepatopancreatic ampulla and opening of the hepatopancreatic sphincter so that means it is also helping in the release of both bile and the pancreatic juice into the duodenum if suppose uh, this is suppose this is the liver this is the gall bladder and this is the pancreas so what will happen that uh, the liver it will make bile and this bile will be given into the gall bladder it will be stored over there the pancreas it is secreting its own pancreatic juice now if we make uh, suppose this is the duct of the liver so that will be hepatic duct and this will be the pancreatic duct both are joining together and they are opening into the duodenum suppose this is the duodenum so both these ducts they are opening into duodenum so here we have written the third function as that it helps to open the hepatopancreatic sphincter so that means it is acting somewhat here <coughs> so it is helping to open this particular duct the hepatopancreatic sphincter or the hole so the hepatopancreatic secretions will be poured into the duodenum from here and they will go along the food and the medium will be now basic because bile has been added into the chyme and the pancreatic juices they have got the enzymes so the enzymes will be acting on the food for digestion so that was the mechanism of cholecystokinin so we had uh, one more hormone which was the gip so this hormone is stimulating the pancreas to release the insulin so this is a very very important hormone as insulin is responsible for the uptake of the sugars from the blood into the cells so that is again helping in the release of insulin from the pancreas so we have discussed two more hormones 
first was the enterogastron and second was the enterokinin so first of all i'll be taking uh, the hormone which is enterogastron so the gastrointestinal hormones that have definite inhibitory effects they have also been seen and gastro hormones the enterogastro hormone it is having a negative negative effect on the secretion of the stomach and it also decreases the stomach motility as such so as we have seen in the case of secretin secretin was also decreasing the movements of the stomach or the gastric motility so here we have again a negative kind of a feedback loop in the form of enterogastron which is giving a negative stimulus to the stomach for decreased motility now this enterogastron hormone it is again secreted by the intestine so that mean that enterogastron and secretin both the hormones they are secreted by intestine and they are giving a negative stimulus to the gastric motility so this is very very important to note now if we go for the second enzyme it is the enterokinin now this particular hormone it is again released by the intestine and it acts on the intestine itself so here the function of the enterokinin is to stimulate the intestinal digestive enzymes so it is helping in the secretion of the intestinal enzymes and it is giving a positive stimulus to the intestinal mucosa now after enterokinin there is a another factor which is called as duocrinin now this particular factor it is supposed to stimulate the secretion of the bruner's glands of the duodenum so that means whenever the food is entering into the duodenum this particular duodenum factor it is also increasing the release of the secretions from the bruner's glands of the duodenum so this is duodenum so this can be written as uh, one of the factor along with these hormones now we are reaching uh, the end of this particular topic with the three phases of digestive regulation so here i should emphasize on the need to go for this particular topic that these three phases of digestive regulation they are important because all the hormones and all the nervous control it is acting because of these three phases the first phase here is the cephalic phase second is the gastric phase and third is the intestinal phase now if we start with the first phase the cephalic phase here you can well see that the stimuli that arouse the digestion they are related to the hypothalamus so cephalic it refers to the brain so whenever you see food when you taste food or you smell the food 
so what will be the stimulus is that you are seeing the food you are smelling it and you are tasting it so that particular stimulus is given to the hypothalamus the nerves they initiated an impulse in the vagus nerve so vagus nerve is stimulated now this impulse it innervates the nerve network of the gi tract so these impulses now they are coming to the gastrointestinal tract so what will happen that it will help to contract of the contract the stomach it will increase the contractions in the duodenum and it stimulates the secretion of the gastric juice so when the secretions they are triggered inside the gastrointestinal tract then you are attracted toward that particular food so whenever you are having empty stomach so you are more attracted towards the food when you even think of a particular kind of a food which you love to eat you will be having increased gastric juice secretions inside your digestive system so this is the neuronal control in the cephalic phase of the digestive processes if we go further we have got the second phase which is the gastric phase so the gastric phase is that when the food when you have taken in the food when you have ingested the food you have eaten the food now this food has gone to your mouth and then it has entered the esophagus now the food has entered the stomach when the food it enters the stomach the gastric phase starts gastric simply means stomach now the stimulus that initiates the gastric phase it includes number 1 it is the distension of the stomach that means when you eat the food that food will be taken up into the stomach the stomach will be now becoming full and the walls of the stomach will be pressurized the stomach will be distended distended means that it will be becoming bigger in size it will be bulging out when it will be having it will be carrying more food so this is the distension of the stomach then we have low acidity low acidity refers to when you eat food rapidly and in higher amounts that means the stomach will be producing acid on its own pace but when you are giving in more and more and more of food in a less of the time there will be less secretion of the hcl from the required amount so that means if you are taking in like 100 grams of food in 1 minute the hcl will be secreted in appropriate amount but when you will be taking 500 grams of food in 1 minute then the hcl will be low in amounts in the stomach so will be having a low acidity third it is the presence of peptides that means if you have protein in the stomach so if you have some uh, peptides over in the food it will stimulate the gastric phase so that means it will be generating the stimulus for the secretion of the hormones which are stimulating the stomach itself for the digestion now after this if we go for the third phase that is the intestinal phase 
so before going for this phase we are coming to the second part of gastric phase now this is the neuronal response now here the gastric juice secretion and the smooth muscle contraction they are promoted so that means that was uh, the very the case of the very first phase the cephalic phase so when you have seen the food when you have tasted or you have smelled it or you have even a thought of that particular food which you like the neuronal response will increase the gastric juice secretion and the smooth muscle contraction in your stomach second is the hormonal response the gastrin production is promoted as we have uh, discussed in the previous slide in the very last line so the what is the general effect the stomach and small intestine it prepares for digestion of chyme and gastric emptying is promoted <coughs> so that means uh, the stomach is doing its work it is making hcl it is going for the protein uh, digestion it is uh, making chyme which is the acidic bolus of uh, the food and the gastric emptying is promoted that means the food it is going for the duodenum now it will leave the stomach and it will enter the duodenum so that was the gastric phase third is the intestinal phase now here what is the neuronal response so as in the cephalic phase here the gastric secretion and gastric motility they are inhibited that means when the food will enter the intestine what will happen the gastric motility and gastric secretions of the stomach it will decrease second is that the intestinal secretion the smooth muscle contraction bile and the pancreatic juice production are promoted so that means as we have seen in the case of pancreasymen so pancreasymen is stimulating the se secretion of more of the enzyme related uh, pancreatic juice so here more of the juices will be coming into the intestine for the digestion of the food when the food is entering into the intestinal phase so that is very obvious now what is the hormonal response the production of the secretin as we have discussed earlier the cholecystokinin the cck and the gip it is promoted what are the general effects the gastric emptying is retarded to allow adequate time for digestion in the small intestine so this is a very very important thing and the intestinal digestion and motility are promoted that means that uh, the first line that the gastric emptying is retarded that means that now you are not having that particular uh, motive to take more of the food so when the food it reaches the intestine you are not having a sense that you need more food so that means the gastric emptying process is retarded whole of the food should not come at once in the intestine it should some of the food when it is it has entered the intestine some of it a bit of it should remain in the stomach for later digestion so that means some of the food that has entered into the intestine should be subjected to right amounts of the intestinal juices for its proper digestion for that gastric emptying is retarded second intestinal digestion and motility are promoted so that means there is a big amount of uh, digestion that is going on in the intestine so that is promoted so students that was all about the digestive processes 
and their regulation so you should go with the both neuronal as well as hormonal regulation of the digestive secretions that is a different topic than physiology of digestion so this question is altogether different and it carries 15 marks so you should go by this question in a very good way and you can have this question as a full-fledged marked question 15 marked question in your examination so that's all for this particular topic thank you very much